Yes, it's, it's, I, I can see it now. No, TK, sure. please carry on. Okay, Sh should I start? Yes. Hello, uh, presentation Shuru Karan, please. Okay, ji. okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor for inviting me to so this esteemed forum. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, in uh, to be in touch with the resident. So my presentation is about societal behavior. The title is uh, is uh, uh, magnitude of a problem, management strategies, and a public health approach. How to manage the problem? So the uh, next slide. I can uh, slide. I can. I cannot. Hello? Is this Okay, so the outline of presentation, uh, first we'll go through introduction and deep, brief background of the problem. And then we'll uh, touch upon international figure and then Pakistani scenario, followed by causes, some theories we'll discuss. And we'll elaborate on respect for societal behavior, and then the pathway to social behavior is a complex phenomena. So what pathway does uh, follow if someone reach to that level when he or she becomes suicidal? Warning signs, very important. And then some myths uh, about uh, uh, suicidal behavior, uh, how, how to manage that. And we'll briefly touch upon a Malacan project, which is on social behavior, which is an ongoing project. And I'm, uh, I'm leading that project with the preliminary results. Uh, lastly, uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, a ways uh, way forward. And we we'll, would like to invite uh, the, the participant to discuss uh, and to put forward their suggestion. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, am I not in control of uh, changing the slides? Sir, we are doing it. Do that myself. Do it. You are the host. Okay. Sir, I can you hear the voice. You are coming. Okay. Okay. Now, the voice is coming. Now it's better. So suicide is uh, uh, as an act which is uh, deliberately undertaken with the fatal outcome and is initiated by the person with a volition to die. Volition is very important. This, uh, this, this, this there are a lot of uh, uh, controversies about the definition. But uh, uh, the accepted definition is that it's willfully initiated act with the intention to die. So we should not forget the word intention or volition. Phenomenology is very complex, as I mentioned earlier. It's characterized by ambivalence uh, to, to a clear-cut intent. They're mostly uh, suicidal people, they are ambivalent about their act. And then this, they follow to a clear intention to kill him or herself or to die by their suicide. And there is an embedded state of distress on part of that person or a situational impulsivity. So at times they are extremely distressed. They want to die. They, they don't see any hope in life. And they are extremely upset with the environment. 
but at the same it's at times they are extremely impulsive so both impulsivity and distress should be uh, should be considered uh, while uh, describing uh, suicidal behavior next slide please Okay, the behavior encompasses ideation. We, we come across in a clinical situation. We should know how common the ideation is and what is the clinical significance of the ideation. Remember, ideation uh, is, a, uh, is very common and mostly we, we explore the suicidal thoughts or morbid uh, dying wish in a clinical in environment. Uh, for every uh, uh, suicidal uh, attempt, there are on average 100 ideations. And for every complete suicide, there are 20 attempts on average. So ideation is very important. And it's a very, uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, important uh, part of the suicidal behavior work. Now, attempts come, and how common is I mentioned, they are mostly uh, on average 20 attempts for every complete suicide. It's very significant. We have to evaluate the attempt. We have to evaluate the seriousness of the attempt in clinical situation. And we have to come up with a concrete kind of uh, concept uh, of uh, an elaborate plan and subsequent execution of that uh, plan in the form of either attempt or a complete suicide. So, so complete suicide, we can only describe scientifically by psychological autopsy. It's a very important research strategy, how to study this uh, important uh, uh, construct, this important uh, complication of, uh, 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 of a psychological disorder. But the only way to study a, uh, this phenomena in a very detailed manner, in a scientific way, is called psychological autopsy. Next slide, please. Uh, the background is very, it's, the slide is uh, not that important clinically, but historically suicide is, is as old as human being itself. At times it's been glamorized, romanticized, glorified, condemned, or medicalized. For instance, in ancient Athens, the people who could commit suicide used to be denied the prevailing burial ritual. So they used to be denied that right. In Greek tradition, the suicide would be glorified at time as an outcome of defeat and battlefield. They would commit suicide, and that suicide used to be glorified. Uh, uh, in the in the community. Uh, next slide, please. So every time, but all the organized religion, the Abrahamic religion like Islam, Christianity, uh, Judaism, every organized religion, they don't approve of suicidal behavior. Some of them, they currently they consider suicidal behavior as outcome of psychopathology. This is the current concept, and we. The global perspective is very important, more than uh, uh, about a million people, they die by suicide every year, accounting for 15% per 100,000 per year globally. 1% commit suicide every 40 seconds. Two thirds of the suicide occur in low and middle income countries. Suicide constitute 2.5% of the total global burden of disease currently. And it's the second commonest cause of mortality in young age group. Uh, where do we stand in Pakistan situation? As you know, there's a scarcity of uh, literature about suicide in Pakistan. Since we don't compile suicide statistics officially, and we don't report that either to the WHO, if we were one of the few countries uh, who they, they don't report the suicide statistic, uh, to World Health Organization. We may, may not be different. Unfortunately, the, the exact statistics are not, not known. We don't compile it, as I mentioned. 
but the available evidence shows that social behavior is on the rise in Pakistan, and we definitely need a credible data on that. Now, causes and risk factor, you all know about theories of suicide, like Durham theory is very, very, very uh, important and uh, well-known theory. It's, Durham was a sociologist, a French sociologist, who came up with the, with the theory of suicide and classified the suicidal phenomena into ego egoistic when a person has got extremely low integration in a social uh, environment. And due to that low social integration and low anti-machine social fabric, he or she commits suicide. In the altruistic, when the person is extremely uh, extremely ingrained in the social uh, fabric and integrated, Firmly and commit suicide. Like for example, they will they come sometimes they commit suicide for the benefit of others in their in the economic suicide when there is totally distortion of social fabric, there is disorderliness, line order situation, uh, uh, and and the chaos in the society. And as a result of that, the the people some people vulnerable people they commit suicide. So according to Durham theory. The egoistic, altruistic, and economic, they are the social causes or social framework for someone to, to go to that extent to kill him or herself. <clears throat> now, important <laughs> Freud, you all know about uh, Freud, psychoanalytic theory. Freud is, uh, according to his theory, mourning and melancholy is the basis for someone to. Uh, for example, modern melancholy is unconsciously the person is, uh, is, is considering this world is empty, not a place to, to, to connect to, or, or, or a so, any social uh, group to connect to. And he considers, or she considers, this whole environment an empty environment uh, where he or she uh, thinks that's not worth living place. And then he reproaches to be part of that, uh, uh, that uh, environment and unconsciously and then consciously punish himself. This is the typical Freudian morning and melancholy theory of psychoanalysis explaining the phenomena of suicide, suicide behavior. Meninger theory is important. It is an inverted homicide. For example, you direct the, <coughs> excuse me, Impulses, the strong impulses towards self and kill yourself. Cognitive paradigm <clears throat> distorted schema to lead this to leading to the state of hopelessness when you are unable to get along with this, you're extremely hopeless and you kill yourself. The biological school of thought very important because it's typically uh, based on objective finding, laboratory finding, like the only a very important finding in people who are suicidal, the serotonin level in cerebrospinal fluid is low. And then in other research finding, there is surge of adrenaline in the body. Also, the HPA access disturbances have been reported in people who are apparently suicidal. The genetics, a very important area, is a biological area and speaks a lot because the, uh, uh, the TPH, tryptophan, hydroxylase gene, polymorphism, and pedigree studies. You can uh, go through the literature, you can see this, uh, the family history, the pedigree, uh, 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 follow up, and uh, the genetical predisposition or genetic loading is very important construct in evaluation assessment of suicidal behavior. This factor. This a little crowded slide. Uh, my apologies for that, but uh, no, this, uh, this is very important. We should be able to identify the risk factor, and more or less these risk factors are uh, globally uh, uh, similar uh, in nature. Uh, Men they are more prone to commit suicides internationally, 3.5 to 1 ratio than men. Well, more, more women, they attempt suicide. 
but this uh, gender uh, proportion is uh, reversing in our part of the world. Like for, for example, in China, in India, and Sri Lanka, some of the studies show that women, they are more likely to kill themselves than men. And new research is emerging why this phenomenon is happening in our part. But international acceptable figure that men, they outnumber uh, in case of uh, their vulnerability to, to die by suicide than women. Age with increasing age, but recent evidence is very interesting that suggests that young group and young people, they are more prone to die by suicide worldwide. And uh, new literature, new body of uh, knowledge is emerging in this thing. Ethnicity, uh, uh, global statistic and dem demography shows that wide male, they are more likely to commit suicide than black. Geographical distribution is very uh, uh, well known. Suicidal men start, start from Scandinavian countries right up to the Japan. Currently, the highest rates being reported in, uh, uh, in Japanese uh, society, which is uh, around 25 per, uh, per 100,000 per year. Religion traditionally is a protective factor, but uh, I'm afraid it's no more because uh, it's, it's, it's getting uh, uh, the, the new, new evidence show that religion may not be that protective as it used to be. Occupation, physician, artists, students, unfortunately, because, because of particular vulnerabilities, they are more prone to uh, uh, commit suicide because of social reasons, biological factors, and uh, psychological factors. Drug medication, alcohol, associated with the, uh, strongly associated with suicidal behavior, and some medication like Rizerpine, which is uh, which is no more in use, but traditionally traditionally been used for hypertension, control high blood pressure, was associated with depression and uh, suicidal behavior. Anti-cancer drugs, anti-Parkinson drugs, they are associated. Some of the antibiotics they are associated with the with the psychological uh, substances and subsequent suicidal behavior. Health status, chronic diseases, cancers, disfigurement, and uh, psychological trauma, for example, uh, uh, people who, uh, uh, have the, who have witnessed or experienced a traumatic event uh, in past, they are more prone to, uh, to go for suicidal behavior. For instance, in uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, we, we come across people who are uh, more vulnerable than uh, than Marital status, marriage is protective factor generally in men. While in Pakistan, research shows that married women commit suicide, they are more vulnerable to commit suicide than, uh, than men. And the very important study, Karachi suicide study by uh, uh, Professor Khan uh, Khan University uh, demonstrated that uh, married women, they are more likely to commit suicide than men. So marriage may not be a protective factor for women in our society. Our preliminary or initial result in Malakhand division also points towards this uh, very important uh, uh, finding that uh, women who are married, they are uh, more likely to uh, go for. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, does mental health matter? This is a very important question. And whenever we discuss the risk factor, so we have to. Uh, uh, we have to keep ourselves extremely vigilant to, to assess someone for mental health issues. For instance, 95% of the suicidal behavior victim have diagnosable psychiatric disorder. And mental health of the different families in the people who die by suicide, by that time, research shows that 85% of them, they had uh, depressive symptoms. Similarly, 60% to 60%, they had history of uh, uh, 
substance abuse, then personality disorder, 45%, psychotic disorder, 15%, and organic brain disorder like delirium, and other uh, condition, organic condition leading to psychological manifestation, they are associated, they associate 5% people, they had organic uh, brain disorders. So we have to be very uh, vigilant about uh, the important fact that in more than 90% people, we, we, we can, uh, we can uh, find any diagnosable psychiatric disorder in people who die by suicide or who, who attempt or who exhibit suicidal behavior. Our next slide, please. This is the first slide. A path is suicide. This is a very important slide. Sometimes we have this concept in mind that whether this person is uh, has become immediately suicidal and this person is uh, out of blue, it's a very kind of suicidal behavior. No, it's not the case. We, uh, we have to explore the phenomena uh, keeping in view upstream factors. Upstream factors meaning the factors in the background which have made this person vulnerable to reach this position, extreme level of uh, psychological vulnerability. The upstream factor made biological, as I mentioned, the risk factor like chronic diseases, uh, uh, substance abuse, etc., maybe psychological uh, uh, personality uh, issues, personality problems, and uh, and uh, uh, kind of uh, ineffective coping strategies to cope with crisis situation, and maybe social, like social uh, disorderliness or social problem person is facing. So these are distant factors. These are upstream factors. They are also called distant factors. It's very really long standing in nature, spanning over months, years, and maybe many years. When these factors, these are factors building upward in the background and putting that person in a situation where a precipitating event in the form of a downstream factor uh, uh, trigger him to, 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 uh, to exhibit social behavior either in the form of ideation, at an elaborate plan, or execution of that plan. So precipitating factors may be, again, maybe biological, psychological, or social in nature. So we have to be very uh, mindful towards the predisposing or distant factor, immediate factor, and then triggering factor. What are the distant factors in the background? What were the immediate factor, maybe over, week, over days, weeks, or months? And what were the triggering factor? So uh, in assessment or formulation of the person who is uh, suicidal, we have to keep these factors in mind. Warning signs, uh, mostly in clinical situation, we come across a, a patient with suicidal behavior, with, uh, with a very obvious warning sign, in the form of personal vulnerability, like the person is unable to cope with the crisis, is unable to, uh, to get along with the stressor in life, and he's unable to uh, come, come up with the normal and valid coping and strategies to solve his or her problem. So these are, you can, you can very well uh, imagine the personal vulnerability of an individual to uh, suicidal behavior. Then the psychological symptom, most remember, most important symptom is psychological symptom is hopelessness. Uh, and, and this is perhaps the, 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 the commonest pathway leading to uh, suicidal behavior in, in, in clinical situations where the person is extremely hopeless uh, and this construct, this psychological is important in terms of uh, managing uh, immediate threat of suicidal behavior in vulnerable patients. 
an elaborate plan. This is a very important warning sign. For example, someone has an elaborate plan. You 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 try to explore the the, the suicidal plan of an individual, and he tells you or she tells you about a very very uh, discreet and elaborate plan how to go about and kill him or herself. A very important warning sign. मिसाल के तौर पे अगर कोई कहे कि जी मैं जाके मैंने ड्राउनिंग के लिए करना है एज अपोज टू दिस की जी मैंने सुबह उठ के जब कोई नहीं होगा मैं दरिया के किनारे जाना और वहां से मैं दरिया में जंप करना सो एन एलाबोरेट प्लान यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर इन ट्रेनिंग वी आर डेफिनेटली so very very important for us to 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 explore the plan then such a certain change in the personality and the attitude of the person second one is that then verbal, verbal warnings unusual statements social media status again very important uh, verbal you can say that you better i should die people will better off when i i'll, I'll be no more there people will will be all right if i am not around so statement like this with dual meaning and statement like this with the with the kind of uh, hopelessness uh, in the background is very important work social media status bahut important hai aajkal facebook twitter wagaira ka jo status hota hai or unusual statement bhi hote hain us are very important work for next time Now assessment may just tarah kaha ki diagnosis psychiatric diagnosis is very important biological uh, we have to follow the psychosocial model while assessing person with with the social behavior like biological factor genetic substance abuse organic brain disorder family history of suicides very important the social stress or immediate crisis even like break up divorce personal loss humiliation in society and social support system kya hai loss of that system distorted social support, lack of social support system it is very important for us to keep these uh, factors in mind while assessing someone for suicidal uh, behavior in psychological uh, dimension very personality trait for example some people with some personality trait they are more prone like borderline traits and some people with uh, other abnormal trait they are more prone to uh, to exhibit suicidal coping strategy is very important you have to understand how to problem solving capacity and the coping with any crisis situation you, so we have to explore the the patient strategies to solve his or her immediate problem and cope with immediate crisis situation treatment option <clears throat> the most important most most important aspect dimension of treatment remember is whether the person needs hospitalization or not whether he or she should be admitted to hospital or not this is a critical decision and being physician being psych mental health professional we should be extremely uh, 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 clear in our mind whether our patient they require admission or not and you have to decide that there and then because hospitalization sometimes is extremely important to save person life is life saving to remove that person from a crisis situation and putting him in a safe environment may be very critical decision on your part so please please be very clear about your decision whether your patient requires hospitalization or not in biological treatment treatment modality you all know medication i will not go and discuss medication uh, in detail because you all know that a lot of uh, uh, you'll have to tell about that and you can go and read about that in guidelines and psychopharmacology books the antidepressant where we should use that when should when we should use that how much we should use that and other medication how should we admit their with our patient request in psychotic mood stabilizer or any other uh, medication ect 
is a very important biological modality, and you should be very clear about that how to how to go about the uh, uh, ECT uh, and what are the requirement of periodic requisite for this very important uh, treatment strategy. But one thing I should uh, I should uh, I, I want to share with you that is uh, about medication. Lot of most of the time you come across the prescription that lot of uh, medication been prescribed for. Uh, uh, I think for every medicine you prescribe, you should have a very clear concept. Why do you do that? Is tarah nahi ki aap koi medicine prescribe kar rahe ho, uske piche aapke reason na ho. If you are prescribing antipsychotic. You should have a clear reason in my mind why you should do that. When you are prescribing antidepressant, you should have very clear idea why do you prescribe a particular medicine for someone who is uh, who is uh, suffering from psychological. But one very important uh, thing you should remember is some medication is very dangerous uh, in poor dose. For example. Tricyclic antidepressant. When you someone who is suicidal with a history of suicidal uh, uh, attempt in, in in past, and you prescribe in, uh, 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 tricyclic antidepressant, so then may, that may not be a good choice because overdose of uh, tricyclic antidepressant is uh, is uh, fatal. It's very dangerous uh, as opposed to SSRI, which are uh, usually safe in overdose. Similarly, lithium, for instance, is, is very tricky drug. Uh, there are a lot of literature suggesting that lithium ma uh, management, lithium is basically is anti-suicide med medicine. It decreases suicidal ideation, suicidal behavior. A lot of literature about that, a lot of research paper about that. But at the same time, overdose of lithium may be very dangerous. Now, psychological intervention. <clears throat> Uh, supportive counseling. Remember, supportive counseling is uh, is highly effective when someone is extremely distressed, unable to cope with situation, unable to solve his problem, and uh, supportive kind of counseling usually help a lot. It may not be very structured, but you should understand and you should know the principle of counseling and how should you go about it. Problem solving counseling, very effective and uh, and, and uh, time tested intervention. When, in, in, when someone is in distress, you go for this. Uh, you should you should clearly understand principle of problem solving counseling and how to administer them. Structured psychotherapy, you all know about CBT, interpersonal psychotherapy. These are two important uh, individual structured psychotherapies. Very effective in uh, in uh, depression. Family therapy is very important. I won't go how to uh, impart CBD or what are the principles of CBD. You all know that you can go to the literature and see, read about that. Same similarly, you can you can read about interpersonal therapy. But these are very important therapies in uh, depressive disorder and someone who is in distress. Social management is the, the the bottom line is you have to activate the social support in favor of your patient. This is the bottom line. Support from but not but from all the following, but not limited to family. You should seek support, mobilize social support from family, from friends, healthcare system, legal fraternity, human rights activists, maybe religious institution. So all these are very important uh, social uh, possible social support system available. To them. You should know how to activate these uh, the, the social support from family member, from friends around, and how should you use your healthcare system in your patient, and how should protect your patient legally, and and also protect his or her human right uh, human rights. Religion is very important. I, maybe sometime you you uh, go back to your religious institution and religious leader to seek help and uh, mobilize support from them uh, in favor of your patient. 
Okay, next slide. <laughs> This is an important slide, very brief, but very important because there are some, some myths uh, about social behavior. For, for example, the, the myth number one is there's someone who is, you should not talk about suicide. You should not explore social behavior. You should not. I think this is very, uh, very important for us being trainees, being clinician. There we should not shy away at all to explore our patient's suicidal behavior and clinical situation. We should outrightly ask about that. And part, this is very important in all across the clinical uh, uh, environment, but more important in children and adolescents, they should, they, you should ask in a concrete manner about suicidal behavior. Myth number two is those who talk, talk about suicide, they sell them. Yaar, ye hai, ye khudkushi, khudkushi ka, ye basic hai. This is the biggest myth. Uh, uh, because someone who talks about suicide is a very, very serious. You have to take this, uh, this idea, ideation, planning, our uh, previous uh, attempt very seriously in clinical situation. Only psychologically ill patient, they commit suicide. It's again myth because sometimes uh, people who are not psychologically ill and given time period, they, they also they, 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 they also suicidal and they make suicidal. suicidal people actually want to die. This is very important. Yes, the volition and it is important, as I mentioned earlier. But there is a lot of ambivalence. I regret my attempt. But this ambivalence is very important. You have to be, uh, you, you have to uh, understand this uh, to and fro kind of mind, mind strategies are part of someone who is suicidal. And you should build on that. You should help your patient to come out of that uh, ambivalence and to and fro uh, uh, mind uh, strategy uh, towards suicidal behavior. Again, suicide is without a warning sign. Research shows there are a lot of warning signs before uh, someone who, uh, who die by suicide, either in the form of uh, uh, change behavior, change personality, or research notes, or kind of verbal statement, or managing their affairs before that, like family affairs, other affairs. So there are a lot of, many of them, they see their research show that many of them, I don't know exact figure, but many of them, they see their uh, psychiatrist, their physician, within one month of the, uh, of the certain behavior. It's very important for us, uh, to address these myths in clinical situation, and we should also be able to bust these myths. And unless we do that, we won't be able to help our patient. And this is also important for us to educate uh, our people about these myths about social behavior. This is briefly about Malakan suicide project. I, I'm leading this project in Malakan division of Khyber Pustanfa and uh, been able to, uh, uh, to compile the data since uh, 2002, uh, to, uh, 2011, and uh, some data, this raw data earlier than that, but we have been able to compile that. Next, I will show you the exponential growth of suicidal behavior in Malacca division. You can see this is the early trend in suicidal behavior, 2011 onward, you can see the total, the, the, the dark blue uh, uh, line. Uh, in 2011, there were maybe 60 or 70 people in whole Malakan division, in sixth, seventh district of Malakan division. But in the first quarter of 2018, this huge jump to 375 people in the whole district. So, so you can you can uh, very well imagine this exponential growth. Uh, there are a lot of factors for that. We'll, I'll, some other time I'll share the factors. 
may not be very representative data, may not be very clean data, but still very important for us to think through the situation that suicidal behavior is extremely on the rise. And one thing I, I, should, I should again share with you is that women are more prone to suicidal behavior according to this data uh, in, in seven district of Malakan division, Khyber uh, Pukhtunpa. Now the way forward is uh, <clears throat> for us being trainee, I think you are very well placed to think through and come up with the, with the strategy like public health approach. You know the public health approach is primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. Uh, I don't have a direct communication with you, otherwise I would have asked question from you about what is the primary, what is the secondary, and what is tertiary prevention. Pr primary prevention is when you prevent something, like agar ab misale, immunization is primary prevention. Secondary, when you identify the case and manage that case there and then, like risk management and crisis management there and then. What is tertiary prevention in suicide? I, I can't hear you, but I, uh, uh, but it's very important. Tertiary prevention in suicide is management of the bereaved family. The family of deceased of some of a suicide victim, they are passing through huge uh, psychological problem and the psychological uh, crisis, helping them and. Supporting them is tertiary prevention in suicide, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, a public approach towards suicidal behavior. Now, community members awareness, destigmatization is very important. At academia level, research is very important because Pakistan is scarcity of research. We don't have much research looking at suicidal behavior uh, and not enough to inform the policy. We don't have enough research available to exert the influence enough to inform policy at political and policy maker level. The legislation is important. You'll be astonished that up till 2018, all patients who attempted suicide in Malakan division, cases were registered against them under Pakistan Penal Court. Despite the fact that we have you know, a, a, a legislation, the uh, uh, Mental Health Act, those are ECA, but you, you, you can very well imagine the, the, uh, the uh, uh, situation on the ground. All cases, 97% of the cases were registered against it under Pakistan. The training. Uh, important robust training is very important in under and postgraduate level to sensitize trainees and medical people about this important capacity building, capacity training, and strengthening the gatekeeper. Now, who are the gatekeeper? Gatekeeper, they are primary health care physicians, gatekeeper are internists, gatekeeper are teachers in school, gatekeepers are religious leaders in the religious institutions. Gatekeeper are politicians. These are all, they are all gatekeeper. We have to strengthen their, their viewpoint and sensitize them about this very important public health problem. And we have to capacitate them. And there are a lot of strategies how to capacitate people and build a capacity in a, in a particular situation. Uh, Next slide, please. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, if you have any question, these are the references. Some of the references. So uh, uh, I don't know how to communicate, but uh, you can ask question. And uh, my email is that you can email me. Uh, later, if you don't have time right now, but uh, I am, I'll be very happy to respond to any question you have. Thank you very much, Professor Yusuf Zai Sahib.
for such a wonderful talk. Uh, it's important to note that anyone who missed these uh, videos, kindly they can access these videos from YouTube at the channel of PPS. So here I request Professor Apridi, he is the Dean PPS, uh, sorry, Dean Faculty of Psychiatry, uh, College of Physician, Dean JPMC JSMU, and President Pakistan Psychiatric Society. Kindly, sir, give the concluding re remarks and words of thanks. First of all, I am very thankful to Professor Wahab Yusufli for giving us this part for working uh, talk on a very important subject because if you look at the uh, mortality rate as a result of COVID, I think every year more than this COVID, we lose very important lives uh, through suicide. So suicide uh, is underreported and uh, this was a very hard working uh, talk and uh, uh, it is uh, to, to be noted that it coincides with the uh, World Suicide Prevention Day which is celebrated which is the 10th September each year and this year uh, theme is uh, working together to prevent suicide. No, my thought is that people get the opportunity to do research in the area where we have our postgraduate dissertation. We have also explored the areas of the area. We have to do it. 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 That uh, postgraduate select a uh, research topic related to suicide. Or, uh, both were or Saval job in his time meeting in Kay when Yamari previous committee meeting. So, may is smoking a pile of hathi with foreign heat as electronics, Hamada program, the right electronic certificate of appreciation. They can to go a study on the boons and I did. और बात बताते चलो कि हमारे यहाँ बहुत सारे लोग एक ही लाइन से जो है ना हमारे जेपीएम पूरी टीम बैठती है और वो एलईडी पे हम सारे एक साथ देखते हैं तो जो अगर पार्टिसिपेंट कम नजर आ रहे होंगे तो भी ये समझ लें कि उसको आप 20 हजार आप देंगे इस तरह सुसाइड वाले जो सुसाइड करते हैं तो 20 हजार आते हैं अगर मुख्तार सब कुछ कहना चाहते हैं लेकिन बाप यू सब जी सब फिर इंशाल्लाह हम ये चाहेंगे कि सुसाइड रिलेटेड जो हमारा इंटरेस्ट ग्रुप है उसको भी उसमें भी आप कंट्रीब्यूट करें थैंक यू सो वेरी मच थैंक यू जी थैंक्स थैंक्स एलोट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके अल्लाह आप सब we have a program on radiology and neuro-radiology and we will have a program on the other side. Thank you so much.